Hey guys, so yes, uh, I'm officially back. Um, I don't know when this video is going to be posted, but uh, right now we're going to go over, you know, a couple souvenirs that I got from my time over in Ukraine, and then we're going to go over some uh, interesting comments, because I know I got a lot of questions, some, some valid questions on my trip in the last video I did. Um, but yeah, there's always, uh, there's always a couple interesting ones. So to start with, we've got an RPK mag, stolen off Russian, gifted to me by my soldiers. And we have a BTR shell, fired at Russians, painted with a trident. And another BTR shell, fired at Russians, painted with the famous poet. And we go on my glorious patch collection. Pause and tell me which one's your favorite. Then we move on to my Polaroids, just some of the ones I took while I was there. Um, some of these are going to be blurred in post, so I'm sorry if you can't see some of these. But yeah, these are um, memories that I'll be having on my wall. And we've got my glorious Ukrainian flag autographed by everyone that I trained and that I worked with. And we've got some uh, metal from a 2S-19 operated by the Russian forces that was blown up and is now on display in the center of Kiev in Maidan Square. These are all pieces of burnt up armor piece of a building from which I lived in after it was damaged when a missile blew up across the street. And then we've got one of my favorite items. Um, some dirt collected from an S-300 impact crater because they fucking missed us. Uh, it happens a lot. We've got some other souvenirs as well. Plate carriers from Russians, hygiene kits, but these are the main noteworthy items. Okay, so we're going to jump right into the questions here. Some of them from YouTube, some of them from TikTok, and... Let's see how this goes. Hey, this one's from Marquise on YouTube. It says, I've followed you for quite some time. Always liked your content, gaming, and other stuff. I'm glad to see somebody's doing good. Thank you. Um, how are you able to get an opportunity to provide the training? Is there a main contact, or do you have the channels that people may sign up to help? Keep up the good work. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, as for how I got involved, um, I had been looking at this for a long time, trying to help. Um, most of the groups that I found were humanitarian stuff, though, and I didn't want to do that. I've got a skill set that I wanted to use. Uh, so I was looking for combat-related groups like instructor training stuff. And um, I messaged an old contact of mine named uh, Sivdiv on YouTube. You may have seen him. He's also a former Marine. Uh, and he was posting about this team that he was working for named Trident Defense Initiative. And from what I saw and from what he said, they were putting in great work, basically training Ukrainian units entirely for free. So I hit him up. He, I re recapped on what my skill set was. And he said, yeah, man, just put in an application, see what happens. Uh, we could definitely use you here. So I put in an application. Um, I nagged a little bit on Instagram and I got accepted. And then shortly after that, I was in Ukraine. But with this stuff, too, you, you do a lot of networking um, and you build a lot of connections. Um, I've got quite a few connections now for any time I want to go back to do more training, and I'm already planning my next trip. Uh, this next question comes from Justin on TikTok. It says, is there a lot of people leaving the fight? I've seen a couple stories on it anecdotal, but wondering if it's happening on scale. Uh, so I wasn't there at the beginning of the war, but um, there's been very well documented evidence and videos and testimonies and yes and total stuff to show that at the very beginning of the war yes there was quite a lot of um especially western volunteers uh even former combat veterans who basically wanted to get in the fight and they wanted help but they weren't really ready for the scale of the war it's not like the war in afghanistan it's not like the war in iraq it's not like anything in africa it's a whole different beast um, a lot of guys weren't expecting how severe everything was going to be um and a couple thousand people did indeed run away. Uh, they weren't ready for artillery. They weren't ready to have not have air support. It's not like the cushy lifestyle that we had when our troops had air superiority and fire superiority everywhere else. Uh, but thousands of other veterans did stay, and thousands of other volunteers stayed. If you look at the uh, Foreign Legion right now, they're still going strong. There's a hell of a lot of foreign veterans there, especially a hell of a lot of Americans in there. And quite a few Marines, might I add. Hey, uh, this next question uh, comes from Pierre. Pierre? Uh, I don't know. But it says, uh, what's a Soviet-style tactic you like slash understand and think is a good option next to NATO tactics? Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to be honest. I, I can't even think of any. I 
there's so much old Soviet stuff that like you learn about and you're like, what, what the fuck were they thinking? Like they're the Soviet or the, the Russian Federation military doctrine is essentially the Soviet military doctrine with the words Russian Federation slapped on it. Like there's, it hasn't changed much. We're seeing for the first time in this war that their doctrine overall is even adapting even slightly, especially with stuff like supply lines and how they're running their supplies to avoid being hit by missiles within range of the front lines. Um, the Soviets or the Russians still to this day don't even have a proper IED response. Back in Chechnya, they had the first modern implementation of IEDs used on their troops. They, they don't have any way to counter it. They don't have any way to react to it. Like for the U.S., we have procedures and we have entire training courses dedicated to stuff like that. The Russians don't have that. And then you get stuff like um, constantly changing the side, of the, the, the hand you hold your weapon with. Um, there's a lot of stuff like, oh, I'm stacked up on a door and the door's to my right, but I'm a left-handed person, so, or I'm a right-handed person. So in order to pie this doorway, I'm going to start off with my right hand. And then in the middle of the doorway in the open, I'm going to switch my rifle to my left hand. And it makes no sense because not only are you peeking in a doorway and exposing your body, but now you're giving up that advantage you may ha may or may not have by taking your firing hand off of your weapon and swapping hands and swapping sides. It makes absolutely no sense. And they'll even do stuff like that on patrols where one side of the patrol will hold the rifle in one side and the other side of the patrol will hold the rifle in the other side. And it's the idea of, oh, well, if... Um, my rifle's in my other hand, I can react better in this direction. When, sure, that works in theory, but then if you look at the science of it, like any tier one person will tell you that, like, even if you're trained to shoot, let's say I'm right-handed, and I, I am, I am trained to shoot with my left hand. I know how to shoot with both sides, and I'm good at it. I've done it in competitions and stuff. The problem is, because I'm a right-hand dominant person, even though I'm trained to shoot left-handed, which most people are not trained to shoot with their opposite side, I will physically be incapable of responding at the exact same speed as I would with my right hand. Uh, you'll see a lot of people who will um, go from right hand to left hand and then they'll go to fire their rifle and you'll actually see their dominant hand, which is their normal firing hand on the hand guard, pull the trigger and they respond. It, the, the math is, or the science is basically you respond at least like a half second later than you normally would. It's, again, it's something stupid that I just, I, I genuinely don't understand. And then I, I saved the best one for last. We've got another comment from uh, YouTube. It's from someone named Mortises, whatever. It says, why are you wearing Ukrainian Nazi flag? What are you doing in a foreign country who is having a war with another country thousands of miles away from your home? What is your business? So to the first part of your question, um, I did not know that just because you don't like another country... Uh, their flag is now a Nazi flag. Uh, I must have missed in my history class and all my AP classes where that somehow was the truth because it's not. Just because you don't like Ukraine, good for you, doesn't mean that their flag is a Nazi flag. Tough shit. Uh, I, I wore the flag because I worked with the soldiers. I trained the soldiers. I'm identifying with them. and It's part of the uniform. Oh, well. Um, and what, what am I doing in a foreign country and what is my business there? Um, look, I, he, I'm going to give the honest answer on this one. I'm not going to give the smart ass answer. Um, I've had friends in Ukraine since 2008. Uh, when everything kicked off in 2014, I wanted to go help, but I was a year and a half into my enlistment, first enlistment contract with the United States Marine Corps. Can't really go over while I'm active duty. Um, in 2022, when everything kicked off again, I was actively watching the live streams of the border cameras because we knew something was going to happen. And it was at that moment that I knew I was getting out of the Marine Corps already soon. I determined I'm going to go help. Um, I have a specific skill set that I learned in the Marine Corps. I learned how to teach people and I teach them well. And I have this feeling that every moment that I'm sitting here doing nothing and sitting in the U.S., not training people that that skill set is going to waste. So I determined that I'm going to go over there and I'm going to help people and I'm going to teach them how to defend their own country. And that's exactly what I did. And if you don't like it, oh well. Uh, but that's it for questions for now. Um, if you guys have any more, feel free to let me know. I will answer them as I can. I'll do videos when I can. I'm, I'm back at my normal civilian job, so things are a little bit hectic with timing and everything. But uh, yeah, 
I will keep you guys updated. Uh, I'm going to be trying to post more of my footage that I have from Ukraine. Again, I've said it before because a lot of people get mad that I don't post it, but um, there's a lot of stuff that my of uh, there's a lot of my footage that will probably never see the light of day. Um, I worked in a specific environment with specific people, um, and you can't really just show where you train or show every face that you trained or show the other instructors. You can't really just show everything. Um, so yeah, it's, there's a lot of footage that you guys will probably never see or probably won't see for another 10, 15 years. Yeah, uh, if you guys do want to see footage though, um, or pictures and stuff of what my team did, um, and what they still continue to do, um, you can go to Trident Defense Initiative on Instagram and you can go to their uh, website and you can see the photos they post for publicity and stuff of showing how we train people and what we do. Um, but yeah, you guys have a good day.